Gilgamesh said, Though it sounds like a bad dream, this dream may be a good omen. The gods send dreams just to the healthy, never to the weak, so it is a healthy man who has dreamed this. Now I will pray to the great gods for help. I will pray to Shamash, and to your god, to Anu, father of the gods, to Enlil, the counselor, and to Yah, the wise. I will beg them to show you mercy. Then I will have a gold statue made in your image. Don't worry, dear friend, you will soon get better. This votive image will restore you to health. Ankidu said, There is no gold statue that can cure this illness, beloved friend. What Enlil has decried cannot be changed. My fate is settled. There is nothing you can do. At the first glow of dawn, Ankidu cried out to Shamash. He raised his head and the tears poured down his cheeks. I turn to you, Lord, since suddenly fate has turned against me. As for that wretched trapper who found me when I was free in the wilderness, because he destroyed my life, destroy his livelihood. May he go home empty-handed. May no animals ever empty enter his traps. Or if they do, may they vanish like mist. And may he starve for bringing me here. After he had cursed him to his heart's content, then he cursed Shemat, the priestess of Ishtar. Shemat, I assign you an eternal fate. I curse you with the ultimate curse. May it seize you instantly as it leaves my mouth. Never may you have a home and family. Never caress a child of your own. May your man prefer younger, prettier girls. May he beat you as a housewife beats a rug. May you never acquire bright alabaster or shining silver, the delight of many men. May your roof keep leaking and no carpenter fix it. May wild dogs camp in your bedroom. May owls nest in your attic. May drunkards vomit all over you. May a tavern wall be your place of business. May you be dressed in torn robes with filthy underwear. May angry wives sue you. May thorns and briars make your feet bloody. May younger men jeer and the rabble mock you as you walk the streets. Shamat, may all this be your reward for seducing me in the wilderness when I was strong and innocent and free. Bright Shamash, the protector, heard his prayer. Then from heaven the voice of God called out, Anki, do why are you cursing the priestess Shamat? Wasn't it she who gave you the fine bread fit for a god and fine beer fit for a king, who clothed you in a glorious robe and gave you splendid Gilgamesh as your intimate friend? He will lay you down on a bed of honor. He will put you on a royal bier on his left. He will place your statue in the seat of repose. The princes of the earth will kiss its feet. The people of Auric will mourn you. And when you are gone, he will roam the wilderness with matted hair and a lion's skin. When Ankidu heard this, his raging heart grew calm. He thought of Shamat and said, Shamat, I assign you a different fate. My mouth that cursed you will bless you now. May you be adored by nobles and princes. Two miles away from you, may your lover tremble with excitement. One mile away, may he bite his lip in anticipation. May the warrior long to be naked beside you. May Ishtar give you generous lovers whose treasure chests brim with jewels and gold. May the mother of seven be abandoned for your sake. Then Ankidu said to Gilgamesh, You have walked beside me, steadfast through so many dangers. Remember me, never forget what I have endured. The day that Ankidu had his dreams, his strength began failing. For twelve long days he was deathly sick. He lay in his bed in agony, unable to rest, and every day he grew worse. At last he sat up and called out to Gilgamesh, Have you abandoned me now, dear friend? You told me that you would come to help me when I was afraid, but I cannot see you. You have not come to fight off this danger. Yet weren't we to remain forever inseparable, you and I? When he heard the death rattle, Gilgamesh moaned like a dove. His face grew dark. Beloved, wait. Don't leave me. Dearest of men, don't die. Don't let them take you away from me. All through the long night, Gilgamesh wept for his dead friend. At the first glow of dawn, he cried out, Ankadu, dearest brother, you came to York from the wilderness. Your mother was a gazelle, your father a wild ass. You were raised on the milk of antelope and deer and the wandering herds taught you where the best pastures were. May the paths that led you to the cedar forest mourn you constantly day and night. May the elders of Great Walled Oryk mourn you, who gave you their blessing when we departed. May the hills mourn you and the mountains we climbed. May the pastures mourn you as their own son. May the forests we slashed in our fury mourn you. 
May the bear mourn you, the hyena, the panther, the leopard, deer, jackal, lion, wild bull, gazelle. May the rivers Ulaya and Euphrates mourn you, whose sacred waters we offer to the gods. May the young men of great walled Oryk mourn you, who cheered when we slaughtered the bull of heaven. May the farmer mourn you, who praised you to the skies in his harvest song. May the shepherd mourn you, who brought you milk. May the brewer mourn you, who made you fine beer. May Ishtar's priestess mourn you, who massaged you with sweet-smelling oil. May the wedding guests mourn you like their own brother. May the temple priestess mourn you, loosening their hair. Hear me, elders. Hear me, young men. My beloved friend is dead. He is dead. My beloved brother is dead. I will mourn as long as I breathe. I will sob for him like a woman who has lost her only child. O oh, Ankidu, you were the axe at my side, in which my arm trusted, the knife in my sheath, the shield that I carried, my glorious robe, the wide belt around my loins, and now a harsh fate has torn you from me forever. Beloved friend, swift stallion, wild deer, leopard ranging in the wilderness. Ankidu, my friend, swift stallion, wild deer, leopard ranging in the wilderness. Together we crossed the mountains, together we slaughtered the bull of heaven. We killed Humbaba who guarded the cedar forest. O oh, Ankidu, what is the sleep that has seized you, and that has darkened your face and stopped your breath? But Ankidu did not answer. Gilgamesh touched his heart, but it did not beat. Then he veiled Ankidu's face like a bride's. Like an eagle, Gilgamesh circled around him. He paced in front of him back and forth, like a lioness whose cubs are trapped in a pit. He tore out clumps of his hair, tore off his magnificent robes as though they were cursed. At the first glow of dawn, Gilgamesh sent out a proclamation. Goldsmiths, blacksmiths, workers in silver, metal, and gems, create a statue of Ankidu, my friend. Make it more splendid than any statue has ever been made. Cover his beard with lapis lazuli, his chest with gold. Let obsidian and all other beautiful stones, a thousand jewels of every color, be piled along with silver and gold and sent on a barge down the Euphrates to Great Walled York by Ankadu's statue. I will lay him down on a bed of honor. I will put him on a royal bier on my left. I will place his statue in the seat of repose. The princes of the earth will kiss its feet. The people of Oryk will mourn him. And when he is gone, I will roam the wilderness with matted hair in a lion's skin. After he sent out the proclamation, he went to the treasury, unlocked the door, and surveyed his riches. Then he brought out priceless jewel-studded weapons and tools with inlaid handles of ivory and gold, and he heaped them up for Ankidu, his friend, as an offering to the gods of the underworld. He gathered fattened oxen and sheep, he butchered them, and he piled them high for Ankidu, his beloved friend. He closed his eyes and his mind, he formed an image of the infernal river. And then he opened the palace gate, brought out an offering table of precious yew wood, filled a carnelian bowl with honey, filled a lapis lazuli bowl with butter, and when the offerings were ready, he spread out each one in front of Shamash. To the great queen Ishtar, his offering was a polished javelin of pure cedar. Let Ishtar accept this. Let her welcome my friend and walk at his side in the underworld, so that Ankadu may not be sick at heart. To Sin, the god of the moon, he offered a knife with a curved obsidian blade. Let Sin accept this, let him welcome my friend and walk at his side in the underworld, so that Ankidu may not be sick at heart. To Eresh Kigal, the dark queen of the dead, he offered a lapis lazuli flask. Let the queen accept this, let her welcome my friend and walk at his side in the underworld, so that Ankidu may not be sick at heart. To Tammuz, the shepherd beloved by Ishtar, his offering was a carnelian flute. To Namatar, vizier of the dark guards, a lapis lazuli chair and scepter. To Hushbishbag, handmaid of the dark gods, a golden necklace. To Kasatabat, the infernal sweeper, a silver bracelet. To the housekeeper, Nina Shalulu, a mirror of alabaster, on the back of which was a picture of the cedar forest, inlaid with rubies and lapis lazuli. To the butcher, Bibu, a double-edged knife with a haft of lapis lazuli bearing a picture of the holy Euphrates. When all the offerings were set out, he prayed, Let the gods accept these, let them welcome my friend, and walk at his side in the underworld, so that Ankidu may not be sick at heart. After the funeral, Gilgamesh went out from Yorick into the wilderness with matted hair in a lion's skin.